Welcome to an example of cubic regression on the T84 graphing calculator. Here we're given data on the U.S. natural gas consumption where we have paired data where we have the year and the consumption in quadrillion BTUs. Number one, we're asked to create a scatter plot for the given data and let T be the number of years after 1950. Then we'll perform regression and then we'll make predictions using our model for 1995 and 2020. Before we make our scatter plot, though, it's important to recognize that t is the number of years after 1950, so we're not going to use these values for what we normally think of as x values, but in this case they're actually t values. So for 1950, though, we're going to use t equals 0. For 1960, we'll use t equals 10, since 1960 is 10 years after 1950. For 1970, we'll use 20 and so on. So when we plot this paired data on the coordinate plane, we need to make sure the t-axis contains these values, and then for the y-axis, which in this case we'll call the c of t-axis, the vertical axis must contain these values. So to save some time, I've already created the scatter plot Notice that each paired data represents a point on the coordinate plane. Now you might be asking why we're going to be using cubic regression. If we analyze the behavior of the data, notice how it does have two turns. It has a turn here, another turn here. Remember, polynomial functions have at most n minus one turns where n is a degree. And since a cubic is degree three, three minus one equals two, since our data has two turns, a cubic function should be a good fit. For example, if I was to try to sketch a cubic function to model this data, it might look something like this. Notice how here's one turn, and here's another turn, and therefore we'll perform cubic regression. So now let's go to the calculator and enter the data. So we press stat, enter. If we have old data like I do, we can go to the top of the column, press clear and then enter to clear the entire column. So I'm going to go up and over to L1, clear, enter, and now we'll enter the T values in L1 and the consumption values or CFT values in L2. So let's go back to the table and we have 0, 10, and so on all the way to 60. For L2, we have the consumption. Before we perform the regression, though, let's go ahead and create the scatter plot on the calculator as well. So to make it match the scatter plot that we just saw, let's go ahead and adjust the window so it would be the same as the graph here. So we're going to press window for the x values, which are really t values, we'll enter from negative 10 to 70. Going down to y minimum, let's go from negative 4 to 30. Now a quick easy way to turn the scatter plot on is to press y equals, press up to highlight plot one, and then press enter. If we go back down, notice how it's highlighted, so the scatter plot one is on, so if we press graph, notice how it looks just like our scatter plot here. Now let's perform our cubic regression, and then we'll also graph the cubic function on top of the scatter plot here. 
But before we do this, we want to turn our diagnostic feature on so we can also see the coefficient of determination, or r squared, because this will give us an idea of how strong the model is. So to do this, we're going to press second zero for catalog and scroll down to diagnostic on. So here it is, we're going to press enter and then enter. And now we'll perform regression. So we're going to press stat, right arrow once to calculate. Option six is cubic regression, so we'll press six. And now from here we're going to select Y1 so that we can automatically store the regression equation in Y1. If you have a newer version of this calculator, you probably have a different screen. If you arrow down to store regression equation, you would enter Y1 there. But for this calculator, I'm going to press VARS, right arrow, enter, enter, to select Y1, and now I'm going to press enter again. Notice how we have the regression equation where we're given A, B, C, and D from this form of the cubic equation. Notice that R squared, our coefficient of determination, is also given because we selected diagnostic on. The closer R squared is to one, the better the model. So with an R squared value of approximately 0 0.937, this is a pretty good model. Also notice that A here is given in scientific notation. This means 2.5277 times 10 to the negative fourth. So this is really 0 0.0002527 and so on. If we press graph, we can see the graph of the model on top of the scatter plot. And you can see it's not a perfect fit, but it is a decent fit for the given data. Now let's go back to our questions. Number one, we were asked to create a scatter plot, which we already did on the previous slide. Number two, we just performed the cubic regression into five decimal places. This would be our function. Notice how we're using t instead of x, and we're using c of t instead of y. So now we can use this model to make predictions. So number three, we want to use the model to predict the natural gas consumption in 1995. And since 1995 is within the given data, meaning we were given data from 1950 to 1910, this prediction is actually called interpolation. And for the prediction for number four for 2020, since 2020 is outside the given data, this is called extrapolation. But either way, we need to find the value of t based upon the given year, and then substitute that value for t into the given function. Remember, t is the number of years after 1950, so to find the value of t for 1995, t is going to be equal to 1995 minus the base year of 1950, which is equal to 45. So to make this prediction, we want to find c of 45, so we'd substitute 45 for t, But instead of doing this by hand, we're going to go ahead and use the graphing calculator to evaluate this. This is why it's helpful to store the regression equation in Y1. From the home screen, to find C of 45, we can enter Y1 of 45. So we can press VARS, right arrow, enter, enter. This brings Y1 to the home screen, and then in parentheses, we'll enter 45 and this will evaluate the function for t equals 45. So our prediction would be approximately 21.2 quadrillion BTUs. Just in case you're wondering, one quadrillion is equal to 1,000 trillion. And then for the last question, to make the prediction for the year 2020, we'll first determine the value of t which will be 2020 minus 1950, our base year, this would give us t equals 70. So to make the prediction for 2020, we need to find c of 70. Instead of writing all this out again, let's go ahead and just use the graphing calculator. So again, we'll select VARS, right arrow, enter, enter, and then in parentheses, 70. So the prediction using our model 
for the consumption in 2020 would be 30.5 quadrillion BTUs. Now that we've answered these questions, let's go back one more time and take a look at the scatter plot and the graph of our model. Again, the red points represent the scatter plot and the blue function is our cubic function that we found by performing cubic regression. And again, our coefficient of determination, or R squared, was approximately 0 0.937. I hope you found this helpful.